In this video here, we're going to take a look at the reverse chain rule. Now, the reverse chain rule is a powerful tool for evaluating complicated integrals. And we've already seen the reverse chain rule in action back in one of the previous videos within this chapter when we looked at integrating f of ax plus b. So the first thing to note here then is that if a function can be expressed in this form here, so this is k times f prime of x over f of x, then we can integrate by using the reverse chain rule. Now in this case, we would try ln of our denominator, so ln of f of x. We differentiate to check what we obtain and adjust where necessary. And we can also use a similar method then for functions of this form here. So we have k times f prime of x times f of x to the power of n. So to integrate an expression of this form here then, so this is the integral of k f prime of x times f of x to the power of n with respect to x. What we will do here is try f of x to the power of n plus 1. We differentiate to check what we obtain and again just adjust where necessary. So let's just run through a few quick examples together here for the reverse chain rule. So let's just get started then with example one here. So let's say then that we want to find the following integral here. We have the integral of x squared all over x cubed plus one with respect to x. So the first thing that we need to do here then is spot the form that our integrand takes. So in this case here, our integrand is of this form, so k times f prime of x all over f of x. And as a result here then, what we're going to do is try y is equal to ln of our denominator. So y is equal to ln of our denominator, f of x. So in that case then, y is equal to ln of x cubed plus 1. So if we differentiate y here with respect to x then, dy by dx gives us 3x squared all over x cubed plus 1. So Using the reverse chain rule here then, what we need to do is compare dy by dx to our integrand, okay? And don't forget then that dy by dx here needs to match our integrand. So what I've got here then is three times my integrand, right? I've got three x squared all over x cubed plus one. We just want x squared all over x cubed plus one. So as we already mentioned, right? Just notice then that this result is the original integrand multiplied by three. So therefore, we need to adjust this then by dividing y by 3. And in that case, then what we can see here is the integral of x squared all over x cubed plus 1 with respect to x is equal to 1 over 3 ln of x cubed plus 1 plus c, where the plus c here is just our constant of integration. So that gives us the solution then to example 1. So moving on then, let's have a look now at example 2. So for example two then, we want to find this integral here. Now looking at this integral here, it looks quite complicated, right? But the good news is, by the reverse chain rule, it's actually not too bad. So to begin with here, we need to spot what form our integrand, so our integrand here is just the thing that we're looking to integrate, so what form our integrand here takes. And hopefully then you recognize that our integrand here is of this form here. And as a result, then, we will try y is equal to sine to the 5 of 2x. So just in case you're not too sure where this has come from, right, what I've got here, so for this part anyway, so sine to the 4 of 2x, this here then is my f of x, so f of x to the n, that's this bit here. And if our integrand is of this form here, what we do then is we try y, I'll write it up here, so y is equal to, so f of x to the n plus 1. So to the n plus 1 there, okay? And that's where we obtain then this sine to the 5 of 2x, okay? Just adding 1 to this power here. So what we now do is differentiate y with respect to x here. So if we do that, we obtain dy by dx. And by the chain rule here then, we obtain the following. So we get 5 sine to the 4 of 2x. We times that by cos 2x, and we also times that by 2. And once we simplify here then, we obtain this result. So we get 10 sine to the 4 of 2x, and we times that by cos 2x. So what we now need to do here, let me just do this in a different colour. So we need to compare this result then for dy by dx to our integrand here. Okay. And what you should notice then, 
is that this result here for dy by dx is the original integrand multiplied by 10. So therefore we need to adjust then by dividing y by 10. And if we do that here then, what we get is the integral of sine to the 4 of 2x times cos 2x all with respect to x is equal to 1 over 10. So as we've just mentioned, right, just dividing y here by 10, we get 1 over 10 sine to the 5 of 2x plus c, but the plus c here is just our constant of integration. So there we have it, that gives us the solution to example 2. So moving on to example 3 then, our penultimate example here, let's say that we want to find this integral here. And again, at first glance, this integral looks quite complicated. So to begin with here, what we need to do is spot that our integrand here is of this form again. So it's of the form k times f prime of x times f of x to the n. And as a result then, we will try y is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 1, all to the power then of 3 over 2. So basically, we took this here as f of x to the m. So that's f of x all to the n then. And my n here is a half, right? Because we're taking the square root of the full expression. So adding 1 to that, we get 3 over 2 there. So what we do now is we differentiate y here with respect to x, and that gives us dy by dx. So by the chain rule here then, what we get is the following. So I get 2x plus 3 times 3 over 2 times by x squared plus 3x plus 1, all to the power of a half. And once we simplify that here then, we obtain this result here. So we get 3 over 2 times 2x plus 3 times the square root of x squared plus 3x plus 1. So what we now need to do here, and again, let me just do this in a different color, is compare our derivative here, or the result for our derivative, to the integrand here. Okay. And just notice then that this result for dy by dx is the original integrand multiplied by 3 over 2. Okay, so the only difference here then is we have 3 over 2 in front. So therefore, we need to adjust then by dividing y by 3 over 2. And therefore, in that case, then what this tells us here is the integral of 2x plus 3 times the square root of x squared plus 3x plus 1, all with respect to x here, is equal to 3 over 2 times x squared plus 3x plus 1, all to the power of 3 over 2. And don't forget here then our plus c, but the plus c is just our constant of integration. So there we have it, that gives us the solution to example 3. So to finish with here then, we now have the very last example. So let's say then that we want to find this integral here. So we're integrating then cos x all over 1 plus 4 sine x with respect to x here. And again, to begin with here, you need to spot the correct form of the integrand. So the integrand here then is of this form here. So k times f prime of x over f of x. And as a result then, we will try y is equal to ln of our denominator here. So ln of 1 plus 4 sine x. So what we do now is we differentiate y here with respect to x. So in that case, dy by dx is equal to 4 cos x times 1 all over 1 plus 4 sine x. So this here then is just by the chain rule. And once we simplify this here then, we get 4 cos x all over 1 plus 4 sine x. So all we need to do here, and again, let me just do this in a different colored pen, is compare our result here, the dy by dx, to the original integrand here. Okay. And hopefully then you notice that this result here for dy by dx is the original integrand multiplied by 4. So therefore, in that case, we need to adjust by dividing y by 4. And if we do that here then, we see that the integral of cos x all over 1 plus 4 sine x with respect to x is equal to 1 over 4. So as we mentioned, right, just dividing y here, so we get 1 over 4 ln of 1 plus 4 sine x plus c. But again, the plus c here is just our constant of integration. So there we have it then. That gives us the solution to the very last example here, example 4. And that brings us to the end then of this video here on the reverse chain rule.